Hello again, it's me, that guy with the YouTube channel, and today is my 20th video, so today I'm going to be reviewing a fairly special figure, one of my favorite figures in my collection from one of my favorite Godzilla movies, the Bandai 50th Anniversary Memorial Box, Godzilla 1975, and before you say anything, this is legit, came with the card, reliable source, so before we get into the figure, let's show the card can you focus it's not focusing let's face it but if you could see it there would be the 75 suit it says 50th anniversary memorial box Mechagodzilla no Gyakushu I believe which means Mechagodzilla's counterattack 1975 something bunch of other stuff I can't read 50th anniversary 1954-2004, and a silhouette of the Yuji Sakai Godzilla 2000, and this is card number 15, not figure number 15, but card number 15. Cards were individually numbered. So on to the detail of the figure, and... Play this okay, come on. It's not going to focus it. Well, the detail on the figure is... Come on, focus. Got there we go. You can see the detail on the feet there. His toes are a nice bronze color. See all the rough texture on the feet going into the standard Godzilla scales. And you can see the overall color for this figure is sort of green vinyl, which doesn't really make a whole lot of sense because Godzilla isn't green. But it works on some figures in the memorial box, but others it comes off it and just just being weird and but this one it looks all right. But it's still a very nice figure. You can see there's a light green spray on his knees. Going up all the way his chest. There's a little you can see there is wrinkles and folds in the suit. There's his breastplate bone thing, which has a light green Highlight on that. His hands are in a sort of ready to fight pose, which this Godzilla commonly took. There's a bronze paint on that, on his fingernails. The mouth teeth are a sort of brownish color, and there's a sort of rose red maroon color in there. And the eyes are black and white, pretty simple. And there's a light green spray on the head and the spines, which don't have highlights on them. I believe this is the only figure that doesn't. They are silver. There are some minor scuffs on them on my figure, but you can see these big patches of green, like right there, aren't actually scuffs. That is because when they painted the spines of the figure, they sprayed one end silver and then the other end silver, which is why some people say this came scuffed, but it's just because the way they painted it, although... A few minor scuffs on mine. See his tail kind of bends at the end there. It's nicely done. The spines are very squishy. Just fun to squish. And there's no detail on the bottom of the feet. Some of the memorial box figures do, but this one doesn't. See there's just a seam right there and then the detail on the bottom of the tail. So detail is very nice. And for articulation, the head can rotate 360 because they need to switch it out for the 74. The arms can not go 360, but if you pull them to the side, they can, but I would advise against that because they kind of scuff up against the part right there, and there's no paint like right here and there, but it can wear away the vinyl and actually cause physical damage to the figure. And the legs can go to out there before they start to hit the other scales, which you don't want to do because you could permanently damage the figure. And the tail is a glue seal. If you broke it, it could move, but come on. You don't break glue seals on Memorial Box figures. You have no class if you do that. So there you go. Articulation, pretty basic. And for sizing, here is the Soul of Chigogin Mechagodzilla 2, which, yeah, this is not a very accurate sizing. Godzilla should be about to there with Mechagodzilla, but he isn't, so pretty inaccurate sizing there. Well, let's check out the figure so you could kind of crouch him down to make up for the size difference. And here he is with the vinyl Mechagodzilla 2, 
the memorial box version as well. I don't have the standard one. And this is an accurate sizing because he was bent at the knees. He would be about that tall to Godzilla. And that is accurate, so sizing here is good. <clears throat> and unfortunately, I don't have Titanosaurus. That's a figure I really want to get. But obviously, it's Titanosaurus, so it's horrendously expensive. So we'll just move on to the next figure. Bandai Creation King Caesar, which I'm not sure on King Caesar's height. But I'm going to say this is an accurate sizing. They looked about that big in the movie. Maybe King Caesar should be a tiny bit bigger, but not that much. Next, here is Mechagodzilla 1974, Bandai Creation, which... Mechagodzilla 74 should be a bit shorter, but it works. Next, here is the Movie Monster series, Jet Jaguar, which this is an accurate sizing. Splints good, get your handshakes in. Next, here's the YMSF Megalon, which like I said in the Megalon review, he was standing up straight. He would be about that big to Godzilla, which would be accurate if he just wasn't bent over so much. Next here, next here is the Bandai Create, not Bandai Creation, Bandai Movie Monster Series Gaia in 1972. Which, it looks good, but Gigan should be just a little bit bigger. It's a minor issue. Next is the figure that is in every video so far. My repainted Bandai Creation Final Wars Rodan, who I have to hold in. If it was Final Wars Rodan, Godzilla would probably have to be like up to his thigh, but... If you're just going for normal Rodan, normal Godzilla size, then this would be good. Next, here's my only 6-inch Imago Mothra, Rainbow Mothra, which you can see is customized. This looks good. If you want to do something with them in a movie or something, you can do that. Next, here is the Bandai Showa Mothra Larva, and this is a pretty good sizing as well. Something like that, I don't know. Next, here is the SH Monster Arts Damera 1996. Which I'm going to say this is not a very accurate sizing. This Godzilla was 50 meters, and Gamera 96, I believe, is a Gamera, I think, is always 60 meters, so he should be about that big compared to Godzilla. About. So, yeah, but you know, they work if you want to use them in a fan film or a movie or something. You can do them more than accurate sizing, but if you want to be more accurate, you can use the Bandai Gamera 1995. And if this figure was standing up straight, he would be about that big compared to Godzilla. So that is an accurate sizing, and they look a little odd together, but they definitely work. Next, here's the NECA Godzilla 2014. Completely inaccurate, but just to give you an idea of how big this figure looks with this. Next, here's a standard NECA Pacific Rim Kaiju. Again, completely inaccurate, but just to give you an idea of how big he looks with a common figure. Next, here is a standard SH Monster Arts figure, the SH Monster Arts Godzilla 1995 Rebirth version. Again, completely inaccurate, but just sort of to show that how big he is compared to this figure. Next, just keep going on. Here is the Bandai 2009 Ultra Hero Series Ultraman Powered, which this is a pretty accurate sizing. Powered might need to be a little bit bigger, looking into Godzilla's brow, but it's pretty good, 55 meters, 50 meters. Again, that's just trying to give you an idea of the sizing. And finally, here's the Ultra Act Ultraman Leo version 1, which, yeah, this is pretty accurate. Leo's just a tad bit taller, because 52 meters, 50 meters... It looks a little bit together. Anyways, that's it for sizing. Now on to the final part of the review. History of the figure and pricing. So this figure was originally released in the 2002 Movie Monster series as Godzilla 1974 with just basically a black paint job. I don't think it had any highlights on anything. I think silver toenails and fingernails and obviously the 74 head sculpt. And then but this figure, this mold was reused with a re-sculpted head. The head was re-sculpted for the 50th anniversary memorial box for what you see here. But it was also 
the 70, it was used with the 74 head at the same time in the memorial box with a re-sculpted arm to be imposter Godzilla. So, yeah, it had the little chipped off piece of skin. And then this mold was used one last time, released alongside the movie monster series Titanosaurus as a Toys Dream Project box set around the same time of the band uh, of the Soul of Jagokin Mechagodzilla 2. <clears throat> to sort of coincide with the release of that and that figure had pretty much the same paint job as the movie monsters Godzilla 74 except had gray highlights on his knees and breastbone I'm not sure if there was one on the head or not I think the toenails weren't painted or fingernails and availability of this figure we'll, we'll start with the 74 it's pretty uncommon you're not very likely to come across that figure at all and I haven't ever seen that in a very long time the imposter Godzilla is actually probably the most common of the figures using this mold and 74 I think is around 50 to 60 dollars typically on eBay so it's a little bit expensive you might want to search around a little bit more, try and find one a little cheaper, maybe without the tag and paint scuffs, but like I said, pretty uncommon. If Imposter Godzilla, I think, is around about that same price range, maybe a little bit cheaper, and, you know, obviously with the card worth more. This figure is around 60 to $70, maybe more. With Memorial Box figures, are really at the mercy of the eBay seller, wherever you're buying it from. And the Toys Dream Project one, good luck trying to find that release loose, because it's almost always sold in the set with Titanosaurus, and never sold loose. So you're looking at around $200 if you want that figure, and you'll be buying it in the set with Titanosaurus most likely. So that one's probably more expensive. And I'm not really sure on the loose prices of a Toys Dream Project Godzilla 1975, but you get the idea. All of the, every figure using this mold is very expensive. And this figure, there are a lot of bootlegs out of it out there. This is one of the Memorial Box figures that gets a lot of bootlegs made. And some Memorial Box figures have bootlegs, others don't, like Mechagodzilla here, who no one really cares about, so it doesn't have bootlegs, but... This figure does, it's one of the figures that is commonly bootlegged. The difference is, I'm not too sure, because a lot of the telltale signs with Memorial Box bootlegs is if there's no highlights in here, but every time this figure was made, there were no highlights, so the bootleg, that makes the bootlegs even harder to tell, but I know mine's official, came with the card, mint in the original bag. <laughs> And then it would have been in to protect it from paint rub inside of the box. And uh, I'm, I don't really see this figure that much. And if you're wanting to get one and be 100% sure it's official, you might just have to pay the full price to be 100% to be certain that it has the card and is from a reliable seller. And... Nowadays, I don't see this figure come up on eBay very often. In fact, not at all. Last time I checked, didn't even see this figure. So, good luck trying to find one of these. One of this figure, any figure using this mold, because they're all usually very uncommon and expensive. So, for a rating, I'm going to give this figure a 10 out of 10, because it's one of my favorite figures in my collection, from one of my favorite Godzilla movies. And... Yeah, 10 out of 10. That's it for this review. See you in the next one. Bye.